Yo people, welcome to the video. So today we are going to talk about some of the worst and most common mistakes that people make when it comes to money and all things finance related. Now, here's the bad news. Young people, probably people in your age group, tend to be the worst and most prolific offenders. Now, is that because young people are stupid? No, no more stupid than any other group of people. Anyway, I think more it's just a case of lack of experience, right? They haven't had as much practice dealing with money and making responsible financial decisions, right? That's the rule in it. That's why we practice stuff because it makes you better at it. And so therefore lack of practice equals lack of skill and expertise in that field. So hopefully this is gonna help. Hopefully this is gonna stop you making some of these mistakes if you're already making them. Stop, let's do it, right? These are what I consider to be the worst mistakes and the ones that you should make the most effort to avoid. The first thing I wanna talk about is living in your overdraft. Now, you might be sat there thinking, hang on a minute, I'm a student, I've got a student account where my overdraft is free, I don't actually get charged for using it, therefore, Joe might not be talking to me, this might not apply to me, maybe I'll just skip to number two. Well, don't, I am talking to you, right? This applies across the board, even if you don't actively get charged interest or an account fee for your overdraft. That doesn't necessarily mean that you should be maxing it out or just abusing it, right? Think about what an overdraft actually is. It's basically a safety net that is there to act as your emergency fund in times when you're unlikely to have an emergency fund or to be able to build one up yourself. So what a lot of people will do is get this free student overdraft and instead of seeing it as an overdraft and treating it as one, really as something that is only to be used as a contingency plan reserved for emergencies only, they just see it as money that they can just burn through. It's just free money that they can just worry about later. And so they'll gradually just increase their standard of living and cost of living with that until they're just through the entire overdraft and all of a sudden minus 3000 is the new zero right because they wanted to buy some new clothes every week or they wanted to go on an extra four nights out a week or maybe they wanted to shop in M&S when really you should have been in Aldi mate you know what I mean if you're a student you want to be decked out in head to toe Primark right and eating beans mate that is it right anything else might be too much right if you find yourself picking up a tin of tuna chunks you might have to really consider putting it down and picking up tuna flakes mate. that might be the level that you have to exist on for a, for a short while right now I'm kidding but you get the idea I might not be kidding right maybe you need to go farm foods don't go farm foods it's minging but what I'm saying is right if you burn through the overdraft and then all of a sudden the minus 3,000 is your zero so then when you get a student loan payment in or some wages from a part-time job, right? It takes you slightly above the minus 3,000 and then you just work back down to it. Then you've lost the entire function of an overdraft in the first place, right? And if for some reason, like hopefully it doesn't happen, but if for some reason you are hit with some unexpected cost, you might have to go over your overdraft. And if you go overdrawn on your overdraft, that's when you're gonna get some pretty nasty fees. It's not gonna be pleasant, mate. So we should be avoiding that at all costs, right? And beyond that, one day you're gonna have to pay it back, right? And think about how demoralizing it is to be in the minus for like three, four, maybe five years straight if you do a PhD, right? Maybe longer if you do a postdoctorate, whatever. It's not great, right? And the truth is, you might get out of uni and you'll want to do stuff like, you know, go on holidays with your mates or maybe like save for a house and you're going to be starting off in the minus. That's just generally like demoralizing psychologically. It's not somewhere where you want to really start off ideally because your first job out of uni, it might not pay you that well, right? Wages aren't that great, especially in the UK right now. You might start like a grad scheme on like 21K, right? After tax and that, 21K is literally buttons, right? It's not gonna be that easy to like repay back your 3,000 overdraft or whatever it is. Now, you might not be a student. You might just have an overdraft that you're actually paying for. If so, then all the above applies, except it's worse because you're actually paying for it. Let's get this straight, right? The real pandemic out there is people driving cars they can't afford, yeah. I mean, I'm not saying, that sounds like I'm saying the real one isn't real. I'm not saying that one isn't real. They're both real. Another one 
yeah, you know what I'm saying. So since the advent of PCP contracts and PCH, it is easier than ever for people to drive around in big, new, shiny, expensive cars that they just could never dream of actually purchasing outright. And I'm not saying that purchasing a car outright is the only way that you should ever buy one or ever drive one, right? In some instances, I'm sure these kind of deals, these kind of PCH, PCP contracts, you know, where people are basically just renting a car, I'm sure they work for some people and I'm sure they're perfectly reasonable for their own circumstances. So I've got nothing against them per se. The problem arises from the fact that it makes all these expensive cars accessible to people who can't really afford them. You know, the salesman, if he thinks that you've got a disposable income of £1,200 a month, he's going to try and sell you a car that will cost you £1,200 a month. He does not care if you have money left over for, you know, your tuna flakes or whatever it happens to be. Yeah. He's got no real responsibility to make sure that you're also contributing to your stocks and shares ISA or, you know, saving for your house deposit or just generally being a responsible adult, right? He wants you to be irresponsible. And so you end up with all these people driving around in these cars, paying like sometimes the equivalent of a mortgage to drive a car for maybe three years, four years. And then at the end of it, you just give it back. You have no equity in it. You don't actually have anything to show for it. You don't own anything, right? And there's all that money is gone. I hope you enjoyed it, right? And maybe you did. Maybe you really did get enough value from that. And that is everyone's individual decision and judgment to make. I'm not here to, you know, make comment about that. But you have to think about the cost of that money and where else it could have gone and could it have been put to better use? You know, just because you can buy something doesn't mean that you can afford it. Yeah, just because I can drive out the forecourt in this new car, it doesn't mean that really I can afford it. You know, you really have to think what actual benefit am I getting from this? Is it worth it? What else could I have done with this money? Yeah, and you can't fall into this trap of just trying to impress other people because literally nobody worth caring about cares about your car. Like literally nobody cares. So this one follows on from the last really in a sense that we are currently living in this flashy, showy, status driven culture where everyone's just trying to impress everyone on Instagram, right? And so people will just buy designer stuff like, you know, post a pic with your new bag or in your new expensive coat or your new trainers, right? And to fuel this kind of lifestyle, right? Because it is expensive, right? Impressing people is expensive because the thing about it is doesn't really last long, you know, even if you buy some new trainers, you post them, someone's like, whoa, your trainers are sick, therefore, by extension, I think you're sick, right? So what? What happens next week, man? You need a new pair of trainers, mate, and that's an expensive lifestyle, and so people fund this stuff through, like, store cards or credit cards and get themselves into, like, quite a bit of debt, and then what they do is just pay the minimum payment every month, so you're getting absolutely shafted everywhere on interest. One day, becomes a bit too much, you have to get out another credit card, do a balance transfer to pay off that one, and it's just this endless cycle of debt driven by this weird need to like be someone that other people think is cool, right? But nobody actually does think it's cool, right? Only other people that are doing it. And you know what's better than buying expensive stuff and getting admiration from people off the back of that, right? It's being able to buy it being able to afford it and just not telling anyone yeah you don't have to shove stuff in people's face it's not actually a necessity for people to know that you can afford it because you knowing that you can afford it and not buying it is probably better than other people thinking you can afford it because you bought it when really you know you can't afford you know what I'm trying to say, right? You just gotta unplug from this status-driven sense of ego. Life will be better and cheaper. So the fourth mistake, probably the most common mistake, is starting to record a clip as you're about to take a sip of water. Now, it's not saving any money, right? Now, I'm not saying that everyone should save a lot of money. I'm not saying everyone should be putting 50% of their income away. You might be young and relatively poor. You might just like work part time or something. You might not have much money. You might not earn much money. You should still save something, right? I don't care if it's one pound a week, right? Because in the first instance, if you are able to save a decent amount of money, even just anything relatively significant, the effects of compound interest over time are going to like have a big, big difference, right? An extra five years saving can make a huge difference in the grand scheme of things, you know, and it can actually make you richer in the latter parts of your life, right? But even if you think, you know, I can only save a quid a week, 
two quid a week that's not even you know if compound interest goes nuts on it it's still going to be like 20 quid right that's fair enough but it still enables you to get into a good habit right and it's all about building those habits because then in future when you come into more money instead of going all oh, right i've just got paid two thousand pounds now i can go and spend two thousand pounds your first thought is right how do i portion this out what proportion of this money is available for me to spend and what proportion is reasonable for me to save and what you might actually find is that right this is weird this is super super weird man might sound crazy right you might enjoy saving yeah you might be 16 and you get, you see your little piggy bank just getting fatter and fatter and you might think this is actually sick mate do you know what I mean? That happens, you get kind of addicted to it. Not addicted in a bad way, do you know what I mean? You're not like a fiend or anything. But, you know, you just enjoy it, become enthusiastic about it, you see things building up, and that's just gonna stand you in good stead for the rest of your life, basically. Number five is wasting too much money paying for convenience. Now, we do live in a convenience-based economy where essentially everything's just set up to make your life as easy as possible for a price, right? And so, you can often save yourself a bit of time by just paying a bit of a premium in some way or another. And often, it's actually worth it because the time that you save might be more valuable to you than the money that you spend, especially if you're gonna do something useful with it, right? Whether that's useful from a productive and financial sense or just useful in terms of, you're gonna get a lot of like fulfillment out of it. Yeah, maybe you're gonna make pottery in that time. Who knows, right? Anyway, if you are a young person with a lot of time on your hands and not much money on your hands, then you need to think about which one of those two you wanna be giving up, right? And make sure it's the right one at the right time. So maybe in those circumstances, you wanna be getting like the bus instead of getting an Uber. You definitely wanna be walking the extra 500 meters to do your food shop at Aldi instead of, you know, getting stuff from the co-op. The co-op's expensive, mate. And certainly, probably the biggest one is just learn how to cook, mate. Learn how to cook yourself some decent meals and it's gonna end up a lot cheaper than ordering delivery every Friday, yeah. You don't have to be a chef. You don't even have to learn how to cook. Just learn how to prepare or just heat up some basic sustenance, mate. And save you a lot of uh, money in the long run. They're the kind of things that do build up over time. So the sixth thing is actually moving out too soon. Now, I understand that everyone has different personal circumstances and it's not particularly black and white because some people genuinely do thrive from the added responsibility of having to stand on their own two feet, yeah? And if you've been particularly dependent on your parents, say, then it can really be good personal development-wise to like get out there and actually practice being a responsible adult, right? However, I don't I don't think it's something that everyone should automatically look to be doing as soon as possible, right? I get it, you know, there is pressure when you're a kid, you want to get out, you don't want to be like living with your parents, like, you know, maybe you're like 25 and you live with your parents and like, that's seen like societally as a bad thing, but it shouldn't be like, these are the kind of things that you just can't let affect you. You have to think about what is the best decision for you, right? And it might not be moving out immediately, like, I get it. Especially lads, right? You, you wanna, obviously you wanna get your own pad, like, you know, get some girls around that. You're gonna have to meet them in your Vauxhall Corsa for another year, mate, because it might be better to get some money behind you first, right? Because if moving out means that you're no longer able to actually save money, then it might be better to just live at home a bit longer, get a bit of money behind you, or even just work on your kind of earning power so that when you do finally move out, you're in a much better position. Number seven is wasting time slash being aimless right on the surface that might sound like i'm about to say at all times you should be like trying to make money yeah you know trying to just stack paper that's not stacking paper is it that's 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 unstacking paper stacking paper right i'm not saying that at all right you know you might want to take time out not earn any money whatsoever you might just want to burn through money mate you might want to go volunteer like rehabilitating some orangutans in borneo yeah you might want to do a season in ibiza you might want to rehabilitate people who've been to Ibiza, you might wanna get spiritual, go do some like yoga retreat in like Goa. I don't really care what it is, right? Just do something, focus on something. It doesn't have to be something financial, but if you're gonna take a gap year or take some time out, then take it for a purpose, take it for a reason, so that you're actually gonna like be productive. And I don't mean productive, it might not be career-wise, you might, you might have a like, real passion for Harry Potter, right? And you just might wanna memorize the entire like Harry Potter series and that's gonna make you like feel warm inside and, and improve your quality of life, right? And if that's 
the case then fine do it but don't just don't just take a gap year and like be unemployed for a year because you don't know what else to do right at any time right you should have some default plans now if you don't know what else to do make money right i'm not saying that you should always make money but i'm saying when you're doing nothing yeah just make some money it doesn't matter any job right you might as well right because right i get it you're young you've got all these options it's confusing you don't know what to do should i study more should i get a job should i take this job take that job do an internship a apprenticeship should i like try and save a bit of money and travel right and and it's like confusing because you got a lot of options right it's good but it's also like difficult to decide stuff yeah totally and people might ask you like oh what are you doing you know what are you doing with your life and you're like oh, just don't ask me that like someone's asking me what i'm doing in my life and I, I don't know like just do something man just like work the shittest part-time job you can get it doesn't matter right anytime you don't have a plan be working right or be making some money or be working on a project or something because you can do that while you make a plan right you don't need to be unemployed to decide what you're gonna do with your life and it might not even be a time when you're taking like a gap year or a period in between things right when i was in my final year at uni i had about 12 15 hours a week of lectures and i probably did about three to five hours a week of extra work you know like just homework and like coursework whatever it was yeah not much mate so maximum that was like 20 hours of my week gone guess what else i did right i just watched scrubs and like gilmore girls i like sat in my room didn't really do that much i you know, went to the gym a few times i could have like learned an instrument or a language or you know done something productive or like like learn about business learn about making money i could have learned about anything right i could have done something productive and i didn't right because i was just a, a proper helmet but don't be a helmet like me learn from my mistakes don't waste your time yeah so i hope that last one made sense like what i'm saying is in a nutshell you don't always have to be making money but if you've got nothing else to do then it's a great default mode right because then when you do have an idea of what you want to do you've got some money to do it with all right people we out i hope you enjoyed the video obviously if you did it would be great if you would subscribe to this youtube channel hit that thumbs up button make it blue leave me a comment saying this is for the algorithm i don't even actually like you but i just felt really generous today and so i thought it would help you and your youtube channel potentially get a million subscribers see you later